Hi, I'm the Fertility Godmother, and today I'm going to show you how to chart your basal body temperature so that it's easy and you have an idea of what you're doing. I am Denise noyer Rez, and I'm a fertility acupuncturist and the owner of AIM Wellness Clinic in Westlake Village, California. I help couples identify and correct the underlying conditions that are keeping them from getting pregnant. So welcome to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to share with you exactly what you need to do so that you can chart your basal body temperature and just keep it simple and you know a little bit more why you're doing that. And if you haven't checked out already, make sure you check out our video in depth about why it's important to, um, to chart your basal body temperature because it does give you a lot of great information. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up a perfect basal body temperature chart right now. There it is. Okay, so this is what your basal body temperature in the perfect world should look like. It doesn't have to be this perfect, but you want it to be as close to this as possible. So first of all, what you're gonna need is a thermometer. It's really important to have that. Uh, you wanna get one that has at least two digits on it. So you can get that point. So 97.6 is gonna be really important when you're charting because those little, those little um, tenths of a, of a degree make a big difference in knowing what's going on with your menstrual cycle. So you wanna have that. You'll have a pen next to your bed, a piece of paper, or even your phone if you're, um, if you're collecting the data on an app. And there's a lot of great apps out there. Uh, what you're going to see is, well, first, sorry, first thing you need to do is before you do anything else, you want to um, take your temperature. So before you roll over and hug your honey, before you go let the dogs out, you need to just take the 30 seconds and take your temperature. You're going to stick the thermometer underneath your tongue. Um, that seems to be the most comfortable way to do it. You can also put it in the vagina. It's more stable there, but a lot of people aren't comfortable doing that. So as long as you're consistent, it doesn't really matter. Um, but you can go ahead and uh, do that first thing, put the thermometer under your tongue to get your temperature, and then you're going to record it down before you do anything else. It's also really important that you get um, three hours of an uninterrupted sleep because that, that'll give you more of an accurate reading. If you aren't able to get the three hours, then you can go ahead and take your temperature, but you wanna make note of that because it's gonna affect your temperature. So you wanna just know why your temperature is off that day. The other things that can affect your temperature are if you had alcohol the night before, if you had a headache or a stress day, stressful day, if you had a bad night's sleep, there's a lot of different things that can impact it. So it's, this isn't like the perfect science, but it's really great information. And um, that if you jot down those reasons why, um, especially if you had a headache or something like that happened, um, we can be able to track that and look back and see what was going on. So it's, it's important to know that. Um, what you wanna look at is as you're charting every day, you can see um, the beginning of your cycle here. So you're gonna start, um, it's best to try to start on cycle day one, um, a new chart every, every month. Um, so on cycle day one, you'll start here and it should be fairly low below this red line here. Um, and you want it to see, stay somewhat stable. One thing I see a lot of um, charts that go up and down, up and down, and that gives us some really good information. Um, there's something going on in your in your life or in your body that, that needs to be corrected. A lot of times this has to do with um, just managing stressful situations. Um, we see that a lot. So, um, what's gonna happen is you, it's gonna dip right around ovulation time. You're gonna get this dip and then you're gonna get this spike. And so technically you should be ovulating, this person ovulated around cycle day 13, uh, 13, 14. But by the time you get the spike, you've already ovulated, so you've missed your mark. So it's really important to know, just know that for information. What you do wanna mark on your chart as well though is if you've got any fertile mucus, because that again will help us just determine or help you determine um, are you getting the fertile mucus around your ovulation? Because we often see a lot of women, they actually have the, the fertile mucus, but it actually dries up before they ovulate. 
So uh, it's really important because that's what's going to nourish the sperm so that it can live longer. Um, after you ovulate, you should get this nice spike, and it should be at least five degrees um, higher than the, than the dip, and it needs to go above this line. So you can um, see that this one stays pretty consistent. Um, sometimes you'll see it be consistent, and then halfway through it drops, and then it stays down here. Sometimes it goes back up, like up and down. It's really important for it to stay consistent. That shows that you're having a healthy cycle. And it needs to be elevated above that red line. So if it's not above that, that line and it's yours, you don't see those changes, that's also really important information that there's a hormone imbalance that needs to be corrected before you're trying to conceive. And it could be some, uh, some really valuable information of to why you've been having uh, some difficulties. Um, your period, your, I'm sorry, your temperatures should, again, stay elevated. And then right before you get your period, if you're going to get your period, it'll drop because and then it'll just start all over again. You want to, again, pay attention to um, if you have any symptoms before your period, you can write that down. That's really great because they should also be corrected. It's a sign you shouldn't have any cramps or bloating or um, moodiness you, sensation before your period because there's a lot going on. But um, any cramps or bloating or moodiness, that, that's indicating that you, know, you, you need to um, improve the health of your reproductive system. You need to get some really healthy circulation there and correct that imbalance. The other thing, of course, is important to know when your fertile window, uh, when, how often you have sex. So you want to keep chart of that. And I, I think... That'll do it. It's a, I know it's a lot of information, but it's a really great tool. It'll give you some great information. And if you haven't already, make sure to check out the why, because it's always important to know why you're, you're doing something. Um, I did talk a little bit about that now, but you'll get some more information on our other YouTube video. So if you haven't already, please make sure to click the red button below and subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up if you like this video. And here's to your healthy fertility. We'll see you soon.